Rockland Family International Church presents Apostle E. H. Maulana, an emissary and servant of the Lord Jesus Christ by the will of God and a steward of the secrets and mysteries of God. Evening, Papa. You see, when I see, when I see handwritings, I see people's faces. <laughs> okay. Evening, Papa. How do I make sure that the doors of iniquity that I have closed cannot be opened in future generations? It's a good question, yeah? Yes. How do I know I have closed a certain door? How do I now know that this door is not going to be opened in the future generation? How many of you know the reason why God called Abraham? Is there any of you who know the reason why God chose Abraham? Okay, I don't have time to be opening scripture because of our time. But if you then look, his father was polygamous. Okay. If you look in the Bible, God says, I have called you Abraham because you will be able to teach your generations about me. So God was entrusting Abraham and he knew that this man, if I introduce myself as Elohim to him, he is going to turn and tell all his generation after him about me. Like she says, they were coming from a family that you could have many wives and also many gods. Before Abraham, the concept of one God was not yet known. People had the God of fertility, the God of rain, the God of this, and you had to have all of them. And the more gods you had, people would admire you. If someone came into your house and they saw your shrine, and you start walking and say, yeah, I've acquired the God of water, and then the God of fertility, and then the God of health, And then the God of this, someone will be like, oh, can I have this one? (laughs) Can I also have this one? But God then came and introduced himself as I am the one and only God. And God wanted Abraham to pass on the knowledge of one God to all the generation. That's why when you find out Moses getting into the wilderness, he comes across a priest of the most high God in the Midianites. People that were not Jews. But if you look at the Midianites, they were also offsprings of Abraham. Because one of the children of Abraham became a Midianite. Jethro, the father-in-law of Moses, came into the camp and told Moses about God. And yet he was not an Israelite. He only started understanding that there's a God of Abraham and Jacob, but he knew God also from a different perspective. Which means that Abraham had been able to teach the children His generations about that. So, how do you make sure that the iniquities you have broken are not passed on to the next one? You need to teach your children about the things of God. You cannot break. Because demons have nothing to do with how anointed you are. Demons take advantage of ignorance. You need to make sure your generation is not ignorant of the things of God. That's why God kept on saying to the, to the assembly with Moses, repeat to your children. Let them know. Repeat these words to your children. Remember when Moses uh, won the battle by lifting up the, 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 the rod? And God came to him and says, go tell Joshua so that he tells the children the victory that I did. So God was all about the nation of Israel passing on information about who their God was. Remember in those days, there was no written evidence. It was all word of mouth. They had to tell their children what God did. He split the waters. He did this. And the next generation started telling the next generation. And the next generation started telling up until they started writing. So you have a responsibility to start teaching your children, which is something that we hardly hear in families nowadays. Your daughters are learning about sex from YouTube. Instead of sitting down with your daughter and start explaining the biological composition of her body, you are shy yourself because your parents never taught you that. 
You need to start having times where you come together and you start teaching your children, whether one by one or together, and you start telling them the wonders that God has done for you. They need to be introduced to the God. and you call, This is the God of our fathers. This is the God that we know. You need to tell them who God is so that when they grow up, they will not depart from that way. Don't even say I'm going to cancel a spirit of iniquity in the fourth generation. It doesn't happen like that. If your kid is dumb and doesn't know about God, demons will come and take advantage of his ignorance. When they are still little kids, teach them about God. Because knowledge is what protects them. That's why in this church, as much as we can prophesy, as much as most of you are gifted in casting out demons, most of you are gifted in miracles and all those, you hardly see us focusing on that. We believe those things follow rather than we focus on those things. Here we teach the word because the ignorance, the, 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 the greatest deliverance you need is in your mind. So teach your children. Let them understand. Praise the Lord. Iniquities. What is the root cause of iniquities to be planted in a certain bloodline? Is it disobeying God? Who plants iniquities in the bloodline? God or Satan? Woo! Let's give him a hand. That's nice. Yes. Iniquities... Are generic, they are not caused by anyone sinning. Remember, there's a person who's blind, and Jesus is passing by, and then the disciples stop him and say, Master, Master, tell us, who sinned? This man is born blind. When he's born as a child, he's blind. And then people are stopping him and asking him, who sinned? Is it this man or his parents that he was born blind? How many of you have sinned in your mother's womb? And then when you come out, you come out crippled. You're like, yeah, I used to sin too much for nine months. <laughs> so they are asking Jesus, who sinned? Is it this man or is it the parents? The reason why he came out born blind. Who sinned? And Jesus doesn't laugh at them and say, ah, you guys are crazy. <laughs> Jesus simply says, neither of them. But he doesn't refute the idea that both can sin in the mother's womb. How? It's stuff that I'll tell you about. I'll get to teach you. For example, you see a, a, a baby bringing out his hand first. That's why I say don't commit abortion. These are real people. Alive people. Takes out his hand and says, I'm first. And then they put a, ring, uh, a, a scarlet ring on him. And then he puts it back. And then one also comes and be born. And then the other one comes and says, but I came out first. And like, ha, ha, ha. So things can happen in the mother's womb there. When you are carrying that thing from the time of inception, the moment the heart is created. Don't even say, I've got an embryo. I've got this or I've got this. It's a person. So however, iniquity came not from how your fathers are sinning. Iniquity came from Adam. The whole human race fell. So the major iniquity that all of us were now being born with a bent crookedness within ourselves was because Adam sinned from the day one. Are we together? So everything that he started producing had iniquity in it. Now, your forefathers and some of you now started specializing in particular sins. Your forefathers started having a tendency to us to go to a particular one now. They became doctors in being drunk. Some of them became doctors in polygamy. Some of them became doctors in, in, in certain types of, of sins, which are homosexuality tendencies and everything. Now, that then becomes a family line. If you come from that type of bloodline, your family specializes. In that thing that your forefathers used to do. So just like some of you right now are busy inventing new ways of sinning in this generation. In 2019, 2018, you are coming up with a new way to sin. Understand, the moment you start practicing that sin, let's say for example of bribery. 
and you become a master in bribery. That's how you now do your business throughout. Understand that your kids are going to come out also. On top of all the cases that are coming, they also come and they become also masters of bribery. You have introduced it in your generation. But that's a small one. The big one is that you sleep around. So you start taking the sin from this person. If they were struggling with poverty and a spirit that says your business never prospers, and you are coming from somewhere with a spirit that says you always be sick, you mix together and all those demons become one. So they look at you as one house because the two shall become one. So you start introducing more iniquities and more cases in your life and you start practicing. You, you, you were never a person to have tendencies towards sleeping around. But the moment you dated this one girl, even though you were faithful, you dated this one girl, but you then happened to sleep with her before marriage. You acquired all the STDs, the sexually transmitted demons, and they became part of you. Amongst them was a spirit of promiscuity that this girl had. You were born cool. But after you broke up or while you are still with her, you find yourself promiscuous all of a sudden. You have introduced a new sin in your bloodline. So not only now are you dealing with only three types of iniquities, you have introduced another one in your family. Not only that, the people that this woman keeps on going to sin with, all those demons, they still come and become part of you. All of a sudden, you just have a tendency of having striking headaches and you wonder, where are they coming from? And then the doctor gives you a very good report. Heat wave. Ah, <laughs> okay, it can be, okay, okay. <laughs> but we look at you and we don't see any heat wave there. So you're the only one in Botswana getting headaches from heat wave. Check back at the people you lay with. Look through their genealogies and you see that there are things now have become yours. What's yours, it's mine, and what's mine is yours. We are all now one. One happy family. There you are now, master of invention. You have introduced another deeper iniquity in your family line. There you were even struggling with one of getting employment. But you have introduced others, so now you've got more demons to fight with. And you are only alive for the next 40 years. We will bury you in poverty. My son, those gospel preachers lie. I tried it the whole lifetime. I never got a breakthrough. Papa, you used to sleep around. Shut up. <laughs> we are many. We've got brothers there, brothers in the bush, brothers everywhere. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I used to. And Muruti told me if I tithe, everything is blessed. I'm blessed. He used to make me shout, I'm blessed. Look at me now. <laughs> but I know someone in this place is breaking all generational cases. We have to. We have to. We have to make a stand and say we are a different generation. There's a scripture I love about David in the book of Acts. And Stephen is talking about this and he mentions it in passing, but it's powerful. He says, and when David had served God in his generation, he passed on. Imagine saying to yourself, in my generation, I want to serve God. Imagine the impact that it makes on the next generation. And the next, and remember, God promises you a blessing to a thousand generations. And iniquity, he promises to visit it to a fourth generation. Answering the last question on that, who puts iniquity? Like I told you, with the fall of men, Satan then came and we, were became, we then became sinful. It's not God who comes and takes the iniquity and puts it upon us. But what God does, he enforces 
the curse of the iniquity. God makes sure that you never prosper. Himself, not Satan here. Let's take Satan off. Let's put Satan out on vacation in Hawaii and leave you with your iniquities. You see, Satan will come back and he will hate you because you'll be more destructive than him by yourself. And Satan will be like, ah, this one wants to be the devil more than me. He wants, he wants to be a master of evil more than me. God himself takes the curses himself and he puts it on those sons of disobedience. Remember we read the scripture, the wrath of God is being revealed from heaven to those who are disobedient. So this is God himself. He makes sure that the iniquity is passed on from generation to generation. Let's move on. Verse 